Hey there internets, I'm Michael and today on Super Player Game we have a review of Adrenaline by Czech Games Edition. But what is it? Well, let's take a look at the box. We have Smiley Face Terminator, Punk Girl, Lizard, Soldier, Squid thing? And they're all shooting at each other and bashing each other and generally trying to kill each other in this futuristic setting. So it's just like a first person shooter. In fact, that's exactly what it is. A first person shooter turned into a board game. But how does that work? How, how could that even be? Well, in this game, you are controlling one of these five characters here. And you have these minis that you're moving around the board. On your turn, you have two actions that you can perform. And you can choose from three options and perform options multiple times if you wish. There's run around where you'll move around the board. There's grab stuff where you'll pick up ammo and weapons. And then there is shoot where you will shoot someone and try and kill them. The way this all works is that you have resource management with regards to your ammo cubes. So you've got to make sure that you've got the ammo there to be able to perform your actions to shoot, as well as ammo there to reload your weapons. There's also an element of area control, because when you do damage, it gets placed on that player's health track. And whoever has the most damage on that player when they die gets the most victory points. Whoever has the fewest gets the fewest victory points. And if you have none, you'll get no victory points. So it's an element of area control there, resource management, and just this hugely thematic aspect of you pick up a chainsaw and you hit them with it. You're running around the board, it's fast, it's frantic, and it's great fun. So what do I think of the arc? Well, the artwork is really good for enhancing that thematic feel of the game. I'm not talking about the artwork you see here because you don't see that really in a lot of the game. Okay, you've got the character portraits on your player boards, which helps you kind of get a feel for the character, but you've got models for that anyway. And the board is nice, it's colourful, it's well done in a graphic layout sense. You know, the skulls, it all looks good. The rooms are clearly denoted by colour. You can thick black lines for walls. The doorways are clear. The spawn points are clear. Everything's clear, except for one little frustrating thing. In this red room here, there's a big gap in the floor that confuses people quite a lot, which is a shame. That's the one kind of flaw on the board artwork there. The artwork on the cards is what really does it this game justice. Thematic wise, you know, let's just take a look at these three examples here. You've got the chainsaw and you've got a chainsaw that you're holding and attacking someone with. And you can see in the image that you're doing that. And the artwork, the iconography underneath is clear and concise telling you what it does and how it works. And it's effective and looks good. And then this shockwave here does the same, and it's got fire effect this time. And the four here has this electricity effect, even in the iconography, which is fantastic. It's really nice, really attractive, and also really clear and intuitive to use for playing. So what then about the components? Well, the component quality in this game is stellar. It is fantastic. You've got these minis which are gorgeous, fantastic, detailed miniatures that you would expect in a miniature heavy game. Okay, there's only five of them, but they're really nice. The colours are bright and vibrant, and if you want to paint them up, you can. And the insert is fantastic for keeping them really nice. You know, you've got bits jutting out on all of these, but there's nothing bent, there's nothing out of place, there's nothing wrong because they each have these perfectly moulded trays and there's space for other resources. You've got these see-through skulls that are absolutely fantastic. They fit with the theme, they just look nice on the table, it's nice to pick one up and sit it on your board when you've just been killed. It works really nicely. The one thing that's not so great is these blood drops for the different characters it's not really that there's anything wrong with them there's just something that doesn't quite feel or look blood drop right to my mind again something not quite good is the ammo cubes 
They are not as good quality as they could be, but they're perfectly nice and functioning. All the cardboard bits are really high quality, thick cardboard, including the player boards. And the cards <coughs> are reasonable quality. The board is a really good component. Now, it's kind of unusual to have the board actually split, but it works really nicely for giving that variety in the setup that you can have these different boards for the different number of players to make it bigger or smaller. And you don't really, because they're such high weight cardboard, you don't really have an issue with them getting knocked to skew or separating on the table, or at least I haven't had any issues like that. So that's probably enough on the components, but there is one last thing I'm going to talk about. And that's this weapons manual here. Now, it's a nice, simple thing. They could have put this in the rule book, but then you've got to look, lug around the whole rule book during the game. But it's just really handy just to have detailed explanation of what all the weapons do in a nice, easy to read, easy to pass round leaflet. Okay, so what about the gameplay then? What do I think of this game? Well, I'm absolutely in love with this game. I think this is a fantastic game. It's so thematic with the charging around. As long as you keep the game pace up, it's thematic. You know, you do feel like you're running around, shooting people, going pew pew, pew pew, jumping in and out of things. It feels fantastic. But without being this just huge random dice rolling going on that you could expect in this kind of thematic game. The actual core elements of the gameplay there with the area control on the different tracks is really unique and really interesting to see it combined in that way. The idea of health and being an area is innovative. It's really fantastic to see and it just works so well to make it that you're not just blindly running around shooting but you have an element of that but you're thinking right well I need to get some damage on them or oh, if I can do this amount of damage on them I'll push them over and kill them and get the kill shot and then maybe get some nice points at the end of the game there. There's a lot to think about, a lot going on and it's really enjoyable but it can be too much to think about for some people and that can be the problem with this game if you're playing with the wrong people it will just grind to a halt on someone's turn while they're sat there going yeah which is okay for a little bit but if you're having lots of that it just kills the flow of the game and that flow of the game really is essential for the enjoyment of the game and if you lose that kind of flow of action 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 you lose the thematicness and it's not that it's a bad game without that thematicness. And it's not that that will happen for everyone in every case. I mean, I absolutely love this game and I don't really have that big a problem with it. But I have played a couple of games that have had that where you're just kind of like, oh, it's my go, what's going on again, where am I? <laughs> you, you know, you've just, you've lost the feel, you've lost the flow. It can happen. And that's kind of a shame. But the actual core mechanics, everything going on, the idea that they thought about First Blood being a thing that happens in first player shooters, you know, getting kill shots and overkills and factoring those into the mechanics is really good. The fact that, you know, an overkill is good for you because it gets you two points on the kill track rather than one, which can help you with that majority control. It's just so well done and it's a well done that you wouldn't expect. You just wouldn't expect these mechanics combined. The way that the ammo pickups work with the cards, the fact that you get some ammo is free on a card for when you pick it up, but otherwise you've got to pay for it, and then you've got to balance the fact that, okay, I can get a high ammo cost weapons that do these high damage, but then I've got to spend longer getting the ammo to do the damage, or you can go for low ammo cost and be able to use it more often without having to spend as long collecting ammo is quite interesting and works really nice. There is an element of resource management, knowing where to go to get your resources, but the key resource you're always managing is those actions. You know, how, what's the most efficient way for me to get the ammo I need to do the damage I need? And how do you combine these? Creates a really interesting gaming experience. So, how does it work for two players then? Can two play that game? Well, 
I have done a variant for two players. I, it is my favourite variant. I've done a playthrough for that. You can watch that. Officially, there is no two-player rules for this. But because they provide rules for a bot, which they've actually done for a free-player game, because they're aware that free players doesn't really quite work either, so you'll want to add bots in for that. I'd actually say even for a four-player, add a bot. Scalability on this game is a problem. It is a shame that it's a problem, but it is a problem. Now, it is definitely at its best with five players. There is no doubt in my mind. Five players is where this game is fantastic and would be like, uh, wow, this if, if, if it played every player number this well, this would be like, whoa, one of my top games. But the fact that it doesn't scale well is kind of a shame. It's not that it's a bad game at the lower numbers, at four players, it's a really great game still, and very close to being up there. You add in the bot, and basically you've got a five player game, so it works fine. Three players, it's starting to be, yeah, it's an okay game, um, but it has some flaws. The fact that you only have to do one point on damage to someone to actually get quite a lot of points in a three player game is a problem. And that's still a problem with the two player variant. Though having the bots can mitigate this in both those variants, and that's why you have those bots there. So it does enhance the gaming experience to add those in. Now, with the two-player game, it's an okay game. It's not a rush out and buy this to play with two players, but if you have it anyway and you want to just get some practice, or you just, well, you just fancy a game but you've only got one person to play with, that two-player variant will still give you a fun, enjoyable game, just not as good as this game can be. That's the thing, it's still good at the lower numbers, but it is just outstanding at the five player mark. So what else is there to talk about gameplay wise? Well, there are actually some different rules variants in the game, and that's what this little thing here is for. The key thing that this changes is end game scoring. It, does that really enhance the game, make it any better? Well, it definitely changes up the feel of the game somewhat. You've got the kind of tag the spawn points one, means that there's much less focus on the killing other people. Don't get me wrong, that's still happening, but it's much more of a side effect, and then the majority of the scoring is happening at the end of the game because of these tracks here, and it's much less focus on the killing. And I think the killing is much more fun, so it's not really that good or worth having in the game. The other one is having the ammo spots be damaging people. Now again, it just doesn't really feel like the game needed it, like it adds to the game. It feels okay, it gives a bit of variety for people who might want it, but it just doesn't have the same feel when you're playing, and it's just not as much fun. So I think really they're kind of just tag-on add-ons that you can kind of forget about and not really worry about. You probably try them once or twice, but for the most part you'll just play the bog standard I want to kill everyone, because that's what's really fun in this game. And the key thing is that it's fun to kill people, but it's not player elimination. It doesn't even harm people really. You know, the more damage they get, the better they get. It's great. Oh, oh yes, hit me, hit me, hit me. Okay, that's enough. Stop hitting me, stop hitting me. That happens in this game. Um, because you don't want to die because then you lose those special powers. But it has this nice way of balancing out between the players because you're not just focused on one person. And they've done a really good idea with that, with the track here and the fact that as you die, you're worthless to people. You know, there's less reason to try and kill you. It just means that you don't gang up on people in this game. And that's great. It just makes it more fun, more light, more enjoyable. But at the same time, having good strategic choices in there. So, if a thematic game with Euro elements that's full of strategy and very little luck sounds up your street, then you'll want to give Adrenaline by Check Games Edition a go. Okay, I do hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. Please do subscribe to the channel and check out the rest of the videos as well as checking us out on social media. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.